Hi friends, uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm planning to address the topic of bending moment and shear force diagram for a beam with a hinge. I already have a video in my channel where I talk about the basic concepts of hinge beam. Hope you have already watched it. If you haven't, please go to my channel and watch it. In this section, we will be addressing at some alternate methods using which we can solve for this particular reaction which is coming at the hinge location as well as how to draw the bending moment and shear force diagram for a hinge beam. Makes sense? So without much ado, let's start to uncover each of these things one after the other. The first step in this whole exercise is to draw the free body diagram. When you have a beam with two one hinge in between that can be split into two beams and at that point where they are connected that point the connection is replaced by two forces as shown over here one in the x direction and one in the y direction but there is no moment transfer happening at this location why because it allows rotation so there is no moment transfer from this portion of the beam to this portion make sense okay now considering this particular beam as a single rigid body, uh, we can write equations of motion for this particular beam. So once we write equations of motion, uh, there will be three equations. I'm not going in detail, but there will be three equations. I can sum my forces if I call this as my x direction and this as my y direction. I can sum up forces along the x direction and equate it to zero. That will tell my RB x is zero. Then I can do a similar exercise in the y direction. That will tell me I if I replace this particular support over here, this particular support over here by a quantity called let's say RC. I'm calling it RC. Then what will I get? I will get RC minus RBY. I missed a B over there. Minus 40 kilonewton is equal to zero. I still have two equation, two unknowns, which are RC and RBY, but I have only one equation. But don't worry, I can always write another equation. I can sum the moments about this point. Let's say the point where the hinge is there. Let me call that point B. So if I sum up moments about point B, I will end up with uh, there is a clockwise moment because because of the distributed load. The resultant of the distributed load is 40 kN. It is acting at the center. That will be 2 meter. Then there is a counterclockwise moment coming from this particular reaction over here. That will be RC into 4 is equal to zero because the thing is not rotating so the moment should balance if you work out these numbers then if i rc will amount to something like 20 kilonewton while the rby will amount to minus 20 kilonewton makes sense so this is let me just check whether it is correct or not if RBY is negative, that means this is how your free body diagram looks like. Makes sense. You have 220 kN loads acting upward. When you have a distributed load of total 40 kN acting on. Uh, Makes sense. Oh, I have put down here whatever we have gathered over the last four minutes. So this is how the reactions will look like on individual beams. But let me take a slight detour and ask you this question. Are there any other ways of evaluating this reaction forces? In this case, we went by the equilibrium equations. Are there any other methods? Yes, there are. We can actually use the method of consistent deformations at this point, see, let me explain that concept to you using a different example. Then we will come back and draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for this beam.
Make sense? We have a fixed beam here with an internal hinge at point at this point. Let's call that point C. This is our C point. And there is an external load acting at that point also at the hinge point that is capital P. Now, how can I evaluate the support reactions? So the in this case, the support reaction is denoted as the capital R. As you can see over here, I have assumed opposite signs for these two opposite senses or the directions for these two forces because they come at a point, they cancel each other. Now I would I want to evaluate capital R. So what's the best way of going about it? If I go by drawing the free body diagram of these individual beams, then I'm not going to solve it. Why? Because this is a statically indeterminate problem. So the best way to solve for capital R in this sort of a scenario is that you use the method of consistent deformations. By method of consistent deformations, what I mean is you evaluate the displacement at this point assuming that or considering that this point is a part of this beam. If you work out that way, the expression for the displacement at the end of a cantilever is, straightly, is fairly straightforward. So it is the load times L cube divided by 3A. So the load at this point is P minus R, the resultant load to be far more precise. Length of this particular segment is little a, that's why I, there is an A cube in that expression and E A is the flexural rigidity. So this is the displacement of this point considering this as part of this beam. The same exercise can be extended to this portion of the beam and then we will get the displacement of this point C as like this. Can't we equate these two? Yes, we can because they are connected together using an internal hinge. When they are connected together using an internal hinge, this particular point cannot have different displacements. So this is how you exploit the method of consistent deformations to evaluate the reaction forces at this point. Make sense? Now we will go back to the original problem, how we can draw the bending moment and shear force diagram. Uh, I keep telling this in many of my videos. The one thing about beam bending is that have a consistent set of sign conventions and a consist, uh, consistent set of equations. So uh, for the sake of completeness, I will explain this is the sign convention that I am using for the bending moment, uh, for the shear force and for the load applied at, at unit distance or the diff uh, loading so I assume the loading to be positive when it is acting along the y-axis and these are the sign conventions for the bending moment and shear force the one good way to remember this is uh, that when you have a bending moment like this the beam assumes a smiling face so you can think of it as beam bending is a happy world something like that and these are the differential expressions that connect the bending moment to the shear force and the shear force to the loading. Remember that these two equations hold true when you have this kind of sign conventions along with it. Make sense? So that was a bit of an introduction. Now let's go back and try to solve, try to draw the free body diagram. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't explain how to draw bending moment diagram for both of these segments, but we will see how bending moment diagram can be drawn for this particular segment. And fairly it is easy or fairly you can extend this concept to this segment of the beam and draw it. So that's um, not much of a concern. So let's start. Uh, we'll start with the shear force diagram. That makes sense. So. What I'm trying to do is I will make a coordinate system uh, like this. So I, my origin is here. I'm considering a small section which is little x apart from this point and I'm evaluating the shear force at that point. It's not that difficult. As per the sign conventions we have adopted, this is the positive direction of shear force at that section. Makes sense because we had a positive sign convention like this. So this is my positive shear force and then the shear force amounts to something like minus 20 kN once you sum up the forces in the y direction fairly easy. 
I'm not going to explain it further. But you have a point load which is acting at a distance of 3 meter from there. 3 meter from the end where we define the little x coordinate. We define the little x like this. So when little x is greater than 3, your shear force changes and it becomes minus 70 kN and it remains constant. Make sense? So now we have an expression of for shear force for two conditions. We have an expression when x is uh, less than or equal to 3 and when we have an exp then we have an expression when x assumes a value greater than 3 but s x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, so we can plot it. Let's let do the uh, solve for the bending moment diagram then we will plot it together because I would like to drive home couple of things from the combined plot. Now we will start drawing the bending moment diagram. It is also easy. Again, I'm taking a section which is at little x distance from this end and I'm calling this section as little m and if I sum up the moments about little m then I end up with an expression for a moment like this. Rb is nothing but the 20 kN. We have already solved for it. So that's it. Uh, then when x is defined or when x assumes a value greater than 3 then we have this contribution from the point load p as well let me call this section n if i sum up moments about n then there are two other components but this time all the components are in the same direction as the positive sense of the in the same direction as the positive direction or the positive sense of this bending moment m of, m of x once we plug and check, we will get an expression. The expression will look like this bending moment. And this expression is valid when x is greater than or equal to 3. Because we had another expression which tells m of x is minus 20 kN x when x is less than or equal to 3. Make sense? The one good way to check whether your answers are correct because these two functions should give you the same value at x equal to 3. That's a good check you can do uh, to make sure your answers are correct. Now let's start plotting them one after the other. So here I have plotted uh, both bending moment diagrams and uh, shear force diagram. See uh, whether dm by dx is minus v whether this equation is correct or whether this is equation is in consensus with the bending moment and the shear force diagram that we have just drawn. Yes, it is because this is a function which is having a positive slope because we are defining this as the x direction. So this is a function which is having a positive slope. So shear force is already negative when you when it comes over here, dm by dx will give you 20 kN and here dm by dx will give 70 kN. So the slope of this curve is 70 and slope of this line is 20, which is equal to the negative sign of the shear force. Makes sense. So this equation is in consensus. That's good. Then another thing, oh, when you have this well, is the kind of beam we are talking about and the deformed shape of this beam will look like something like this. See, the curvature is not positive. So the curvature is negative. We said if the beam bends like this, then the curvature is positive because it's a happy world. But this is not a happy world. Here the curvature should be negative. The curvature is negative because the bending moment is also negative. See, when you have a consistent set of units, everything falls in place. So this is how you draw the free body diagram for a hinge beam. It's not too different from uh, that of a usual or a normal beam, but just you want to treat that particular uh, re reaction force that coming at the hinge separately and draw the free body diagram separately. That's it. That's all I have to communicate to you in this video. Thanks for watching.